What's up guys? Frankie Eyeballs is back because you guys keep asking me for an eye update and uh, some of you may have noticed already my eyes look kind of straight because I had another surgery yesterday. Uh, that same surgery we did a video on, I think it was like March 20, the week of March 21st. Uh, we had that again on the other eye. So I, I think it looks a lot better. I uh, still got, you know, a week or two of recovery here. And we're actually outside because what I want to do is every morning and maybe sometimes during the day for at least like 20 minutes, look at stuff far away uh, to kind of aid in the recovery and make sure my eyes are, are healing correctly. I'm actually going to, I'm just going to lay in the sun for a few hours today because it's really beautiful out here in PA. It's like no, no clouds at all, really cool weather from what we've been having the past few weeks. So I'm going to like lay outside and, and look at far away and make sure my eyes are healing correctly. So yeah, we just had the surgery again yesterday at New York Eye and Ear uh, with Dr. Wisnicki, who uh, I think he owns the business Union Square Eye Care, who has been uh, nothing but spectacular. If you guys are unfamiliar, I had a cosmetic eye surgery in, uh, always some noises out here in the woods, but it's nice and quiet most of the time. Always some type of bird. So for those of you guys that are unfamiliar, we had a uh, cosmetic surgery back last year in November, December, and visually it went well, but it caused me to be incredibly cross-eyed and I had really bad vision problems. So we had one surgery to correct it in March, a few months later, and then we had just had this second surgery to correct the other eye uh, in June. So three surgeries later, I mean, obviously guys, if I, if I knew what was gonna happen. I, I would never have gotten the surgery in the first place. But uh, overall, would I have done the whole thing over again? I mean, if I didn't experience these things, I wouldn't have figured out how to fix my copper. And guys, the reason I'm not looking at the camera is because I'm actually trying to, to look at stuff far away from my eyes. Uh, I'll say that again. So the only reason I would do the whole experience again is because um, I would never have figured out how to fix my copper toxicity there's a very specific, and I've said this before, there's a very specific course of events that happened with supplementing and experimenting out while I was in LA. And also meet, meeting the nurses and stuff, and they gave me the idea to do several products on organ supplements. And I think those products have been uh, nothing short of amazing in regards to helping people uh, improve their health and uh, really revolutionary in terms of no one else offering the same stuff on the market like the the multivitamin, the multimineral, all natural doses. Uh, we just came out with a probiotic actually, which was their idea too. They wanted a probiotic, so I made one, formulated it. Uh, that just launched like this week. I haven't even really made any videos on it or showed you guys it, but I've been taking it for the past few days. We got flies out here. We got my neighbor's gunshots. I've been taking that probiotic for the past few days and I'm pretty comfortable saying that might be the most important product I've ever come out with because in order to fix your gut, I mean, we're doing an eye surgery update, but the point is that there's a lot of very special things that happened in me deciding to, to get this eye surgery as an overall experience. Obviously, the procedure itself would not have done it again because of what happened, but um, uh, the other things that happened. I'll, I'll talk more about that probiotic in another video, I guess, but it's been working really well. It's available on the website, guys, if you want to fix your gut without having to do water kefir or any other complicated stuff. So physically, like aesthetically, he did a pretty good job. It's a, it's a little asymmetrical. Uh, I think what can't be fixed is under the eyes a little bit. An implant was placed slightly higher than the other one. I don't think that can be adjusted. I don't think any filler can be put in there. The, the eyelids are, are, were asymmetrical too. I think that can be fixed. Uh, he said, I have to wait a few months after uh, this surgery to get the eyelids fixed. So. We'll probably have to have another surgery in September or October, but that's a lot. That's thankfully that surgery is not under anesthesia. It's under like uh, whatever it's called, like local where you stay awake. Um, so I'm, I'm not nearly as worried about that. That should just be a nice trip out to LA. We'll do some restaurant vlogs. We'll have that quick procedure. He'll even out the eyelids and hopefully put some more filler to even out the upper eyes. And that should be it. So uh, we're, we're almost towards the end of of getting it fixed and then I should be more comfortable uh, more comfortable filming videos again and doing all the, the health and nutrition content uh, but speaking of yesterday that I just had surgery 
everything looks a lot better. The eyes look straight. My vision is actually pretty good. Um, so before, after the cosmetic surgery, but before the first corrective procedure, my vision was so bad. I had such bad double vision, like I should not have been driving. Like it was so bad. Um, after that first corrective procedure, it's called strabismus, eye muscle surgery. I, I w it was workable. I could see, I, I didn't really have much double vision, only when I looked to the right. Um, and then I had some eye focusing issues. So my vision still wasn't great, but it was much better than post cosmetic surgery. And now from what he did yesterday, it appears that my vision is like pretty much back to normal, if not better than it ever was. So, uh, we're still gonna sort some things out. I mean, the, the cosmetic surgeon still has to uh, correct this and we're gonna see how, how this whole thing pans out or whether or not I'm gonna talk about that and get more into that aspect of it um, because I've never mentioned the doctor's name or anything like that. Uh, and you know, there's, on one hand, he told me the first time I met him, I didn't need the procedure. On the other hand, he did misrepresent certain things about the procedure such as, you know, he mentioned I would have double vision he didn't say I look like a cross-eyed freakazoid. You know, that's a pretty important factor. Um, he said my eyes would not look closer together. Even after I've had corrective strabismus surgery, my eyes appear a lot closer together. I'm not sure if that could have been prevented because in order, one of the procedures he did was an orbital decompression, which involves removing tissue from behind the eyes. But there's four points at which you can remove tissue from behind the eyes. He removed tissue from the outer and the inner part to push the eyes back. Now there isn't as much tissue in the outer part, there's more tissue in the inner part. So I'm guessing what happened was he removed a lot of tissue in the inner part and removing that amount of tissue caused the eyes to point inward and like go in. Like the eyes went into that inner socket turning inward. That seems pretty, pretty obvious that's what happened. Now, was it possible that he could have taken an even amount of tissue from all four points, I'm assuming that's too invasive. I'm assuming that would be called a four-stage decompression, but usually they don't cut into those areas unless they have to do full decompression in each of those. Now, hey, what if he did upper and lower? Would, I have, would the eyes have been pointing up or down? Would there have been issues there? I really don't know. You know, this guy is the, the best in the field and that I, I'm not gonna, I have no experience whatsoever in this cosmetic sense, I'm guessing that's not possible to do. So uh, from the perspective of getting this procedure done, you guys have basically seen the worst case scenario. I mean, he told me, and I'm guessing he was honest, that he's seen strabismus happen in one eye with his patients. He's seen, he has seen patients have one eye, but he's never seen both as bad as mine. So maybe I had the worst case scenario and then I had to go to New York Eye and Ear Infirmary and I mean, best, probably the best hospital in the world as far as I know for eye and ear surgery and, and get two corrective surgeries to have my eyes fixed. So, you know, I had New York health insurance that was completely covered. We'll, again, we'll sort out. So the situation still hasn't sort of been sorted out yet, but now my vision's better. I can see I'm more comfortable with the appearance and you guys have been bugging me for an update over and over again. Uh, the actual experience yesterday was, was pretty smooth. You know, I mean, I'm a few hours away from New York now, so it's, it's maybe two and a half hour drive, checked in for the surgery at 7.30, waited for about an hour and 45 minutes, and then we were in the operating room. Uh, so like an hour and 10 minutes uh, on one floor, and then they took me down to the surgery operating floor. But what was funny was when I went into the first floor, I was the youngest guy there by like 50 years. And these, all these old people were staring at me sitting in the surgical chair. <laughs> I was like, oh God, Frank, stop doing crazy stuff to yourself. Uh, I was literally like every single one of them were like 80 or 90. So I was like, oh God. Bro, I came into the surgery room. I'm the youngest guy by about 60 years. <laughs> so I think everyone else is like 80 or 20 getting surgery. Yeah, but the sur the only negative part about the whole experience was um, right before right around it was in the operating room when uh, there was this like young Asian kid putting uh, he was putting the the thing in my arm for the anesthesia and he missed right, 
I was like, oh God. So I was happy and excited and looking forward to the surgery. And I was comfortable up until that Asian kid was fucking with my arm. And I was like, and I literally said, you all right, buddy? And then the other nurse that was in there came and did my left arm. But he did like, he put it in a vein that was, it's like close to my elbow down here. So it was hurting a lot. And then they didn't even count down. I was out cold. <laughs> it's like he put the thing in my arm and I started complaining. I was like, that hurts a lot. Can you put it in a different spot? And then, then I woke up. <laughs> then I woke up after the surgery. And I actually scared the hell out of the nurses because I'm, and, and I asked them afterwards. I was like, why has no one ever got out of bed that fast after waking up from anesthesia? And they said, no, they they were, they were freaking out. Cause as soon as I started getting, and I, I was like, I tested myself. I was like, am I coordinated? Am I physically okay? Am I groggy? Am I weak? No. So I started getting up and I sat up in the bed and they started freaking out. They were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But, um, so I kind of woke up. The nurse asked me if I want, if it hurt, if I wanted pain medication. And I said, yes. And she said she gave me hydromorphine or something. And then uh, just a few minutes after that, that's when I got out and left. <laughs> So whatever, whatever the morphine, whatever she gave me, then I just got up and I basically was out of the hospital within like 10 minutes. Um, I think the doctor came and I talked to him for a few minutes. I, I got to call them actually. I got to call them now to see if I have to go back for a follow-up on Monday or if it's in a week or two. I don't remember. Um, well, then we just dro drove back to New York. Uh, not drove back to New York. Uh, drove back to Pennsylvania. I had my buddy bring me there, check me out, bring me back. Uh, yeah, so pretty pretty smooth sailing, I guess. What else? What else do you guys need to know about the eye update? Yeah, so we're pretty much good. Probably chill for a few more months until we get the the other the I don't some you guys might not be able to tell the the right you probably can, and it's more apparent in some videos. My right eyelid is way higher than my left, like that's that's the main asymmetry right now, um, and then there's. And that, that makes the, the upper eye area look kind of asymmetric. So I don't really think I need to get filler in the upper eye area, but I think it would look a lot better because technically he put, he filled in, he filled in all of this under eye area with the implants, but he didn't put implants up here and he needs to put a lot more filler. So hopefully he listens to me and puts as, puts as much as I want because I don't see, I honestly don't see any downsides of putting a lot of filler in that area from a aesthetic perspective of like messing up. Um, if not, hopefully, I mean, then we'll have to get someone else, which is a whole nother fiasco I don't want to get. Yeah, not great timing with my business stuff, honestly. Like my freezer's failing, a uh, lot, big fiasco, big fiasco at the warehouse. My, all my meat's on roof. Look, one of you guys called me up. I was actually in the middle, this was on Wednesday. I was in the middle of driving a forklift getting my meat onto the reefer trucks because my fr freezer was failing. So I was a little stressed out. And one of you guys called me trying to talk about your order. And after I said fairly politely, sorry, we don't do customer service on the phone. Please send an email. And I hung up and I went back to driving the forklift. This little sucker complaint left a complaint with Shopify that the phone number listed on the website, we called it and he said it was a private number. I'm pretty sure the phone number is not listed on the website. I think it's just on the shipping label if there's any issue with FedEx. And I'm like, are these people recording waiting for me to absolutely lose my shit and tell you guys to come over here so we can like bury you behind the warehouse? Like, guys, please, please be a little understanding. We got the crisis with the freezer. I'm getting my eyes gouged out. You guys are sending me emails complaining about the egg orders. You know what happened? I emailed my employee the egg orders to print out and he didn't know how to do it. So I, I can't, forgive me for not, uh, leaving the hospital with blood coming out of my eye to, to send the eggs out. So that's the eye update. Uh, I'm going to get, as I said, I'm going to get a few hours of sun, catch up on a few things. And, um, and I guess we're going to see how soon we can get this guy to fix my eyelids because, uh, as I said, co cosmetically, aesthetically, I think I, I objectively look better than before, but uh, it's honestly like I already had like social media persona and stuff. It was, was wasn't necessary in any any capacity whatsoever. And and from like a from like a personal relationship, uh, what would you call it? 
yeah, I guess like from my relationship perspective and like me meeting people and having partners and stuff, I just work like a dog. Like if my physical appearance has little to do with my success in that realm. And if anything, like me changing my eyes is not that big of a deal. If I, was, if I put on a pair of stilts, yeah, <laughs> that would be the biggest difference in my, my, that would make, I'd have girls knock, I have, have girls lined up outside my house right now. Um, so I just thought it was like something that would make me a little happier and I, I'd be more motivated to kind of get through uh, a lot of these negative things I've dealt with from a business perspective and these people harassing me. And I figured, hey, if this works out and all this looks maxing stuff is super famous, it should hypothetically make me go really viral, but they shadow ban me and censor me in every way they can. So like me, me, me on paper being probably the, I don't want to call myself a looks maxer because I think it's really stupid. And I got all of my procedures and was interested in any sort of cosmetic procedure before the looks maxing trend even existed. I got my double jaw surgery like eight, nine years ago now. This this eye surgery, I scheduled it before looks maxing went viral. So I don't really like associating myself with that community. However, I, I think I'm the person who's had the most procedures from like a success perspective. Um, I'll give you guys I'll give you guys a little bonus. Some of, you, some of you have been busting my ball saying, oh, he got lip filler. Oh, he got lip filler. I did get fucking lip filler. But it's gay as hell, so I don't, I'm not gonna, I didn't wanna admit it. But look, if you watch my videos from years ago, I did not have lips. I had like a small lower lip and no upper lip at all. And from like an aesthetic perspective, if, if you do just the right amount, it looks really good. But um, I went to this really good, I went to this really good nurse, and maybe I'll talk about this in the future. Maybe I can even get her on video. Um, Normally when people, uh, I don't, I shouldn't be talking about this, but I will. Uh, so normally when girls get lip filler, they like plump them up. But the way I did lip filler was I wanted to widen the, the lip area aesthetically. So I had her inject, I had her inject just enough filler to, uh, to open up the upper lip and have a lip. And what I, what I focused on was if, if they inject filler in the outer areas of the lip it can kind of widen it which makes your face look wider and more attractive um so the the and again i don't want to talk touch too much on this but the most important factor if you want to upgrade your lips is that you have wide lips your lips can be really really thin like it's fine if your lips are thin as long as your mouth is wide if your mouth is thin then you might be kind of screwed <laughs> there's only so much you can do so yeah that's it for the eye update so the video is already going to be like 20 minutes. Uh, got a few vlogs coming this week. But guys, please be patient. Please try to be understanding. And uh, you guys have always been fairly supportive. But if anything, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best to get you guys a lot. We're always doing new stuff every week. I'm trying my best to get you guys creative stuff. And honestly, I told myself, look, even if the surgery goes horrifically wrong and I like want to live like a hermit for the rest of my life, I'll still do my businesses and my goal has always been to help people. So I was like, you know, worst case scenario, maybe, maybe my, my looks help me a little bit get popular on YouTube, but fr from, you know, from the perspective of the products I'm offering and what I've done with my businesses, uh, it, I'm, I'm very far from being someone that got by on their looks to say the least. Working in a freaking warehouse for 10 hours a day and doing YouTube the rest and coming up with all this creative stuff is everything everything counts everything helps but definitely not like most of these other people so thanks again for joining guys frank to com to see all of my interesting businesses and uh hopefully by the end of this year everything's uh, everything goes well oh it's blood on the inside should have probably said that at the beginning but it should be gone in a week or two